God in divine decree. Okay? At this point, you have a full human being who is now juxtaposed with his physical body, the spirit. Okay? The, 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 of the things the Prophet stresses at the end, and he makes an, an oath by the one in whose hands lies, the, lies my soul. The Prophet said, Inna ahadakum la ya'amilu bi amili ahli jannah. One of these will act in accordance with the people of paradise. Hatta yakuna baynahu wa baynaha illa dhira'a. Until between you and paradise is a dhira'a. An arm's length. Fayasbiqu alayhi al-kitab. And that which was decreed for him, inscribed upon him, manifests. Yasbiqu overtakes him. Fayamilu bi amili ahli nari fayadkuluha. And he acts with the action of the people of hell, then he enters into it. And what does that mean? Yani your last moment in life, everything could be stripped from you. Everything. The Prophet is not speaking hypothetics. In ahadukum la yamalu, verily one of you will act. And he's and he, it's, it's not giving you hypothetics, he's speaking about reality. Alhamdulillah, we have ulama. And our ulama says, Huna min ummati Muhammad. Here from the ummah of the Prophet, Qaleel, few. Alhamdulillah, he said few, it's not normal for a Muslim last moments to be what? To lose their faith. On their deathbed to lose their faith. But know your deathbed in, in theology today is a tribulation. They mentioned the example of Imam Ahmed ibn Hanbal. Ahmed ibn Hanbal, rahimahullah ta'ala, Imam Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah, Sahibul Yaqeen, Imam of certainty. The Imam of tradition saw Allah in his dreams, hundred times saw Allah, Ahmed ibn Hanbal. And he's not going to be safe from tribulation. He mentioned upon his deathbed that when he give talqeen in Al-Bukhari, when somebody's dying on their deathbed, you should say to them, Qul la ilaha illallah. Say la ilaha illallah. You should get them to say la ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah. And that's why in a great dua, Oh Allah, make our last contract with the world, la ilaha illallah. To make that the last thing that manifests upon our tongue, la ilaha illallah. Ibn Qayyim al in his tuhfa, in the gift of the beloved as it concerns the rights of the newborn, how you raise children, Ibn Qayyim al he said that when you have a child, you should say to the child, la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah. See, that's what you born, Allah. First way to hear is, is the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, dhikr Allah ta'ala. Because as it is in the beginning, so shall it be at the end. As we understand things. So here, Radhi Allah Ta'ala an, Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal, he's on his deathbed, he said to him, Qul la ilaha illallah. Say la ilaha illallah. Ahmad ibn Hanbal says, la, no. And then he falls unconscious. Then he said, eventually, he regains conscious, he's dying. He said, yeah, Imam, Qul la ilaha illallah. Say la ilaha illallah. He says, la, no, no. And then he falls unconscious, Ahmad ibn Hanbal. Then he said, when he comes back to it, he says, Imam, Imam, Qul la ilaha illallah. He says, La ilaha illallah. He says, La ilaha illallah. And then he's dead address Imam Ahmed, Imam, Ya Imam, we asked you twice to say that. You said, No. He said, No. Ya Ahmed Muhammad said, I wasn't speaking to you. He says, But were you just speaking to me from the spirit world? My parents manifested. His parents who died before him. And it was the devil, the shaitan, who assumed their form. Sahibun Nur, the one who has fit light in their heart, they can see it's not their parents, that it's what? It's the shaitan in guise. But the one whose heart has veiled, they're going to see their parents. What did he say? He said, my parents came to me. He said, yeah, Ahmed, we went before you. That's what he said, we went before you. We know the truth in the Barzakh. Jesus is your Lord and Savior. <laughs> he said to him, Jesus is your Lord and Savior. Except Jesus. He said, La, no, no. He said, no to them. But subhan, what type of tribulation is that? That on your deathbed, that people are coming to, you know, have we been before you? That no, reject all that Islam stuff. This is the truth of what comes. And the most dearest people to you, your parents. Okay, fam. So when you act with the action of the people of paradise till you're upon your deathbed, then the words or the reality of the people of hell will overtake you, you enter into hell. Very few, alhamdulillah. But of the opposite, one of you will act the action of the people of hell for your entire life until you're approaching death, on your deathbed approaching death, then you act the action of the people of paradise, la ilaha illallah, for khuluha. And then you enter, you enter into paradise.
and moons his departure from there. And when the person is put in a small body, he weeps a lot. Ya Allah, 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 Ya Allah, what have you done to me? Every baby cries, Allah, Allah, Allah. Whether it's a Muslim, non-Muslim, Jew or Hindu. You can't deny this fact. So here everybody is happy. Oh, here's a child is born. Then when the person leaves from here, here people weep, oh my God, what happened to my mother? my father and when he didn't leave this body and join his friend he's so happy I sugar alhamdulillah I got released from the new prison If you're familiar with Heidegger's philosophy, he built an entire philosophy around the phenomenon of death. And death is ultimately, you know, if you don't want to think about where you're, you came from, everybody at some point has to think about where they're going. There is a point in your life where you will become absolutely certain. It comes to people at different stages in their life. Some people it happens really early and other people it happens really late. So the idea is once you make this, you embrace this meaning, which is your mortality and that you will be brought back into the divine present, that will completely alter your life. You will never be able to look at the world in the same way. And this is the spiritual goal of, of the spiritual path. Now, there's a lot of reasons that why we fear dying. And these five are going to be, the majority of people are going to fall into this. People have a fear of pain. In other words, it's very human to fear the pain, right, that comes with death. 
what's called in the Quran, Sakratul Maut. The fear of loss, separation, leaving this world, loved ones. The fear of meaninglessness. Right? Despair that comes with feeling that your life really didn't turn out the way you wanted, that it wasn't really, uh, you didn't get what you wanted to get done. Fear of the unknown, right? Of what's going to happen in the next realm. Many people will say, well, I don't, there's nothing. But it's Pascal's wager, which is, 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 is in the Muslim tradition called Sayyidina Ali's wager. Because he preceded Pascal by centuries with that. Somebody was debating with him about, uh, you know, belief in the afterlife. He said, well, if, if, if I'm right, you're in big trouble. But if you're right, I don't have a problem. And then fear of non-being, right? It's hard to imagine ourselves just at all. One of the things about death, it actually invigorates your experience of life because you, it's like, this might be the last time I'm ever with you, right? This might, I might never see you again. I mean, we leave, we go to work and come home and think that it's always going to be like this. But there's people all over this country right now that are getting phone calls. I hate to tell you this, but your husband was in a car accident today. You know, your wife, or I hate to tell you this, but you know, the test came back positive. You, you've got terminal cancer. I mean, this is going on all over right now, everywhere. And we forget that. You know, we go into this thing that's always going to be like, she'll always be around. He'll always be around. Once you accept your own mortality, right? What higher about being unto death? You can nurture. You can enter into your humanity.
Beloveds are back 